Hello everyone, welcome to Wrath of Math Lessons. I'm your host, Sean Ian. In today's video, we are going over similar triangles. What are similar triangles? That is our topic of discussion today, and it is a fun one, if I do say so myself. So, if you consider circles first for a moment, you could take any two circles and shrink or enlarge them so that they fit perfectly on top of each other. Of course, these circles aren't perfectly drawn, but we could take this smaller one and just grow it it such that it fits perfectly over this larger circle. The same thing is true with similar triangles. Uh, similar triangles are basically different sized versions of the same triangle. So we could take one triangle here, look something like this, and a similar triangle to this triangle might look something like this. You can see this has the same basic shape as this triangle, but it's just like we've expanded it in a paint uh, photo editor or something like that. So let's put some numbers to these sides, uh, to these side lengths, and then we'll talk a little bit about the maths of it. So now I've labeled these sides with some given length, and let me also name the triangle. Let's say this is ABC, and this triangle over here is DE. F. So if these triangles are similar, we could say that ABC, triangle ABC, is similar, using this sign here, to triangle DEF. And the order of the letters is very important, because the order of the letters basically defines what sides of these triangles are corresponding sides. So if two triangles are similar, the ratios of their corresponding sides have to be equal. So it's very important that you get the right sides to correspond in the name. So let's look at that. Let's look at the actual numbers and hopefully that will make a little more sense. So if we look at the way I've named these triangles, I know that side AB corresponds to side DE. So I can take the ratio of their side lengths and it's going to be equal to the ratio of other corresponding side lengths between these three triangles. So A divided by B, that's a ratio we get 4 over 8. We could reduce it to 1 half, but I'm just going to leave it as 4 over 8. Now that should be equal to any other ratio we look at between corresponding sides within these triangles. So let's look at another pair of corresponding sides. Side BC corresponds to side EF. There's BC, there's EF. So that is 7 over 14. Both of these are equal to one half, so we're good so far. And then the last side is side AC, which corresponds to side DF. Here's AC, that's 10, and then DF is 20. So if you pick the first two letters of this triangle and you're looking at that side, the corresponding side is defined by the first two letters of the other triangle's name. So you see how that works. Side AB corresponds to DE, BC to EF, and AC to DF. And we see that the ratios of those corresponding sides I just listed are all equal. They all happen in this case to be equal to one half. Also with similar triangles, the ratio of any pair of sides of one triangle is equal to the ratio of the corresponding pair of sides. So let me show you what I mean. Let's say I take side AB over AC. That's a ratio of 4 to 10. So that's, I'll put it up here, 4, 10. Now if I take a, the corresponding pair of sides on this triangle, over here I did AB to AC, so here I'm going to do DE to DF. There's DE, there's DF. So 4 tenths should be equal to 8 twentieths. And in this case, again, that's true because they're similar triangles and they are both equal to 2 fifths. And that would work no matter what pair of sides I took um, from these triangles as long as they were corresponding pairs of sides. It's a property of similar triangles, which like I said, are like different sized versions of the same triangle. One more thing I want to mention about similar triangles is that they have congruent angles. Similar triangles can be congruent triangles. For example, if this triangle had side lengths 8, 14, and 20, it would be congruent and similar to this triangle over here. But similar triangles don't always have to be congruent. However, their angles are always congruent. Their corresponding angles, I should say. So angle, the angle at vertex A is congruent 
to the angle at vertex D, the angle at vertex B is congruent to the angle at vertex E, and the angle at vertex C is congruent to the angle at vertex F. Again, the angles have to be corresponding, just like the ratios of the sides we talked about earlier. So that's just a brief introduction to similar triangles. There's lots of cool stuff to talk about with similar triangles, and you can be sure that I'll do lots of videos on that in the future, so be sure to subscribe so you don't miss, miss those. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I hope this video helped you understand what similar triangles are and some of their cool properties. Hopefully you can start to get familiar with them. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, video requests, or need anything clarified. I'll see you next time. Thank you very much for watching and be sure to subscribe for the swankiest math videos on the internet. I can hear your voice from all the way up here, dear. Won't you please come to me? You love it up here, dear. There's a light where I float that erases